Let's make the strongest cocktails with alcohol, mixed with alcohol, garnished with alcohol and see if they're any good. This is not the first such video on my channel, check out part 1, where I made Nikolashka, Antroberta, Sazerac and such, so let's not repeat ourselves. And traditionally I will specify that it is possible to approach this question formally and mix Everclear with Absinthe and get the strongest cocktail in the world, but it is always more pleasant to prepare something more interesting, more palatable, so that people can drink it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today, right after this. Intro. Give us a like and let's go. Let's start with the classics. Ernest Hemingway, famous not only for his books, but also for his love of drinking, invented the cocktail Death in the Afternoon and named it after his 1932 book. The book, by the way, is about the Spanish bullfighting. There are only two ingredients, sparkling wine and absinthe. The cocktail is made directly in a wine glass. I recommend chilling it first. The author's recipe says to take one jigger of absinthe, so one and a half ounce or 45 ml. And dilute with cold champagne or other dry sparkling wine. Papa Hemingway recommends to drink the resulting drink slowly and not to exceed three or four pieces at a time, although even one is a lot. It's very specific. It's not very good, to be honest. Yeah. By the way, I have a whole book about Hemingway's drinks. I can make a video about that if you want. No list of strong cocktails will be complete without some variation on the Long Island iced tea. And today's video is no exception. So I'm going to make The Grateful Dead. The history of the cocktail is unknown. I don't know if it's related to the band or not. And recipes come in many forms, but there's a version that's almost drinkable. By the way, I always thought Grateful Dead meant glad to be dead. Maybe life was hard and thanks for ending it, I don't know. But recently I found out it means something different. Uh, it's a, a dead person that is grateful not for dying, but for being buried. I don't know why you need this information, but now live with it. The cocktail is shaken. And to the shaker we're gonna add a lot of alcohol. For example, vodka, half an ounce, 15 ml. London dry gin, half an ounce, 15 ml. White white rum, half an ounce, 15 ml. Now the choice is yours. You can add tequila or not add tequila. I'm gonna add half an ounce of tequila, 15 ml. Triple sec, the kind that's 40% alcohol, like Cointreau or triple sec. Half an ounce, 15 ml. And raspberry liqueur. You can use Chambord or something like that. Also half an ounce, 15 ml. A little bit of simple syrup, about three quarter ounce, 22 ml. And a little bit of lemon or lime juice, one ounce, 30 ml. A little bit taste for balance. Mm, by the way, it's okay. Fill the shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. Fill the sling glass with ice, fine strain the cocktail and garnish with a lime wheel. It's a strong, sweet, sour cocktail. That is not bad. Uh, I think that uh, adding tequila was not just not like a mistake, but you can uh, omit using tequila. But otherwise, it's a pretty balanced cocktail. You can make it less strong by adding a bit of soda, about one ounce, 30 ml. But why? The Suffering Bastard, created in 1942 in Cairo's Shepherd's Hotel, was originally a hangover cure for World War II troops. Bartender Joe Sylum, or Skylum combined two spirits with lime juice, bitters and ginger beer. The drink became so popular that soldiers reportedly requested bulk orders for the front lines. I have no idea how that worked. Today's recipe typically uses bourbon and gin, though some early variations used brandy instead of bourbon. And in the 1960s, the cocktail was adapted into tiki culture, featuring rum and additional liqueurs, but I'm making the original, kind of. The cocktail is shaken, and to the shaker we're gonna add bourbon, or in my case, this is uh, Irish whiskey, uh, aged in uh, IPA cask, but it was also aged in bourbon cask. So, kind of bourbon, but not quite. One ounce, 30 ml. London dry gin, one ounce, 30 ml. Freshly squeezed lime juice, half an ounce, 15 ml. A couple dashes of Angostura bitters. Fill the shaker with ice and shake it vigorously, dedicating the shake to this comment. To the highball glass, put a big Collins spear, fine strain the cocktail and top up with ginger beer. 
garnish with a mean sprig. And here it is. It's a strong cocktail in a sense that it's a very gingery. It's a, not a very nice taste, not very light. Uh, it's not too sweet. I, I mean, there's no sweetness in it at all because no syrup, no liqueur of some kind. And ginger beer, uh, opposite to ginger ale, is not sweet at all. But it's uh, it's pretty interesting uh, and I understand why it was considered the remedy for a hangover because it, it tastes like a medicine, in a good sense of the word, but not my favorite one. I know of probably only two cocktails in which Angostura bitters is used in quantities greater than a couple of dashes. That's the uh, Trinidad Sour, of course, and the Trade Winds Negroni, which I'm going to make now. If you know any more, tell me in the comments. The cocktail was invented by Justin Elliott of the Townsend Bar, Austin, Texas, and this is a slightly modified version of it. You can make this cocktail in a stirring glass and then strain to another glass, an old-fashioned glass with ice, but why bother if you can make it directly in an old-fashioned glass? To which I'm gonna add red sweet vermouth, one ounce 30 ml, triple sec or Cointreau, three quarter ounce 22 ml, and Angostura bitters. This time I'm gonna need to take off the, the thing on the bottle to make it pour quicker. Three quarter ounce, 22 ml. Stir a little to check for balance. Fill the glass with ice and stir it to chill and dilute. Peel an orange, yes, this is a orange, and express the essential oils. The substantial dose of uh, Angostura aromatic bitters in this Negroni variation results in a notably bitter profile, which is unsurprising. However, uh, the bitterness is more nuanced and pleasurable than you might expect. It is very balanced and pretty fascinating drink. By the way, uh, one time I made this cocktail and uh, I used half of orange bitters and half of Angostura and it was even better. It, it was slightly less bitter, but overall this one is one of its kind. The only cocktail I can compare it to is uh, the uh, Trinidad Sour, which also has a ton of Angostura. Try this one. And now, a shooter. You probably know about Fireball, it's a liqueur made of cinnamon and whiskey, but uh, I'm not gonna add Fireball in it, but I'm gonna make my own. I'm gonna make three shots, because you never drink shots alone, and let's make our Fireball. For three shots I'm gonna use cinnamon syrup, one and a half ounce, 45 ml, and Irish whiskey aged in rum cask, but you can use whichever whiskey you prefer. Also one and a half ounce, 45 ml. Stir, stir, stir. And this is our kinda fireball, but better. Now to the shots. About three quarter ounce or 22 ml of this concoction. Now take white rum and layer it on top. And two dashes of Tabasco sauce in each shot. The fireball shots are ready and my friends are ready. So cheers for you. <sighs> to me that's a perfect strong shot. It uh, has cinnamon in it. It is pretty strong because everything is about 40% alcohol and uh, the liqueur is uh, about 20, but it's, it's warm, it's fuzzy inside and it's perfect for autumn or fall if you are from the USA. And there you have it, homeboy! <laughs> That's it for today. Uh, all the recipes in text form are on my website, dr.dashkork.com. Link is down below. Also my Patreon or YouTube membership, everything is there. So bye bye, do svidos and all that shit. Triple sec, the kind that's 40% alcohol and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Triple sec, the kind that's 40%... <laughs> Triple sec, the kind that's 40% alcohol and... Uh,